So, this will be our second example. So, ito rin yung binigay natin last time na merong mga mga idle time. So, dapat para malaman mo kung tama yung sagot mo dun sa una, dapat magkapareho sila ng makukuha na total end time. Okay? And then, dapat yung CPU utilization nila is pareho din. Okay? So, with this, kamukha nang sinabi ko kanina, kahit na burst time yung criteria natin, ang tinitingnan natin dito ay yung kung nag-arrive na muna. Okay? Kailangan muna malaman dumating na ba yung process. Now, at time zero, wala na namang dumating. So, just like nung kanina, ah, nung first come, first serve. So, pinakamaagang darating is time 3. So, automatically, from 0 to 3, that will be your idle time. So, time 3, so you have here, uh, P4. Okay? So, we have process 4. Si process 4 ay merong tatlo na burst time. This will end at time 6. So, at time 6, wala pong process na darating na kasunod kasi pinaka-earliest pa is time 8. So, ibig sabihin, idle time uli. Start tayo ng time 8. So, at time 8, so, ito na. Okay? So, meron tayong isang process, si P2, yung process natin. Dahil siya lang again, yung laman ng RAM, siya lang uli yung kukuha na ni CPU. So, we have P2. Okay. So, this will end at time 12. So, again, para hindi tayo malito, slash out na natin yung mga tapos na. Okay, so yan. At time 12, ayan. So, dumating yung P1 mo, banda dito. And then, sakto, nung natapos yung P2 natin, dumating na rin yung P3. Okay, so, ayan si P1. And then, eto na si P3. Ayan. So, dahil dalawa yung active process sa RAM, dun mo gagamitin ngayon yung criteria mo na burst time. So, sino sa kanila yung may pinakamaliit na burst time? So, currently, pinakamaliit dito ay si P3. So, yan. So, siya yung process natin. So, makikita nyo yung implementation ng algorithm. Kahit kakarating pa lang ni P3 nung time 12 na una naman to dumating, da dahil mas maliit yung burst time nito, automatically, siya yung pinili natin because of the criteria na ini-implement. Okay? So, this will end at time 16. Okay. So, at time 16, tapos na yung P3. So, ayan. And then, nandito pa din yung P1 mo. Also, dumating yung P5 dito. So, ayan. Dumating yung P5 at time 15. Now, so, nung dumating si P5 at time 15, so, meron tayong dalawang active process sa RAM. So, ito ngayon. Yung question. Okay. Pareho silang 5 yung burst time nila. Okay. So, tie sila. So, anong tiebreaker natin? So, ang pinaka tiebreaker natin ngayon is arrival time. So, sino sa kanila yung nag-arrive ng mas maaga? Dahil pareho sila ng burst time, equal sila, kailangan natin i-break yung tie, ang tiebreaker natin is arrival time. So, for example, kunyari, Pareho pa rin yung arrival time nila. Same burst time, same arrival time. Ang pang-break mo naman dyan is yung process ID. So, ibig sabihin, ganito tandaan nyo. Kung ang criteria natin is uh, burst time, ang mga tiebreaker mo is yung papuntang uh, left side. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung magiging tiebreaker na una. Pag nag-tie pa din, so lastly, itong process ID. Okay? So, yan. So, balik tayo dito sa given. Parehong 5 yung burst time nila. Mas maagang nag-arrive si P1. So, si P1. Yung ipaprocess natin. Okay? So, this will end at time 21. Same goes. Lastly, yung natitira. So, you have P5. So, P5 natin will end at time 26. Okay? Supposed to be dapat yung given natin so, first come, first serve, time 26 din yun nag-stop, uh, okay? Or nag-end. So, let's compute for the CPU utilization. Dapat same yung makukuha natin. So, isum up natin lahat ng burst time over dito times 100. 
Yan. So, we'll be having 21. So, yan yung total nito. Over dito sa last natin na value ng gun chart. So, we have 26. So, times 100. So, we will be having 80.77. Alright. So, this will be our CPU utilization. So, 80.77%. Just like the first come, first serve algorithm. So, kung mga nang sinabi ko sa inyo, if we have the same given, so we'll be having the same end time, total end time, and then the same CPU utilization. Okay, now. So, after this one, so, compute pa din natin. So, we have the end time, we have the turnaround time, and then we have the waiting time. So, P1 ends at time 21. So, P2 time 12. P3 is 16. P4 we have 6. And then lastly, we have 26. Okay. So, end time minus arrival to get the turnaround time. So, this will be 11. And then we have 4. We have here 4 again. We have 3. And then we have here 11. Okay. So turnaround minus burst time. So to get the waiting time. So we'll be having 6. So this will be 0. We have again 0. And then 0 again. And then we have here uh, 6. Okay. So let's try to compute for the average turnaround time. And also average waiting time nung process. Okay, so again, sum up uh, over 5 kasi uh, we have here 5 processes. So let's try to compute. Yeah, so we have 33 over 5. So this will be 6.60. Okay, and for the average waiting time, so we have here 12 over Five, so we'll be having two point forty. Okay, so that will be our shortest job first algorithm. Ah, algorithm. Okay, so try to compare again. So, sino yung nakakuha ng mas mababang average turnaround time and average waiting time? Ah, yun yung mas efficient na algorithm. Na implement for this certain given. Okay?